thankful. Yes, we are. We're so thankful for your goodness, Lord. Oh, you're so good to us. What amazing that the one who made it all is good. The one who went to the cross to pay it all, he is good. We're so thankful, Holy Spirit, that you are good. And there's no shadow of turning in you. We're so thankful, Father. You're always there. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up.
you know, when you get in that realm of worship, you know, other times you might wonder, how can they just sing holy, holy, holy around the, the throne room all that long, long time? But when you're in that space, man, what is, what is more wonderful than holy, holy, holy? Uncommon God. Amen. Our uncommon God. He's not common. He's not like anything else. Our uncommon God. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So next weekend, hallelujah, Saturday night, Sunday night, and in church Sunday morning, the Robinsons. So hallelujah. So get ready. Now the night it is not here is Friday night. Remember, or you'll be standing out there all by yourself. So Saturday, because it's unusual, but usually we would have a Friday, right? But it's Saturday night, Sunday night, and they're also with us Sunday morning. So that's a great time to invite your friends uh, for the evening services. And those who don't have a church, of course, invite them for Sunday morning. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Absolutely awesome. They always are, right? Amen. So it's going to be great. Got a greeting from Calypso and Precious. Missing y'all. Aww. Missing y'all. Yeah. Bless their hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Miss them, too. Miss them, too. Yeah. Some people leave a hole that has to be fit, filled, right? So, thank you, Father. Um, maybe, Birdie, you can come up right now or go over to... Where's our announcement girls? I tell you, I love that, announcements. I don't know how to do it. Announcements, announcements. <laughs> we had a wonderful week in prayer. Thank you for all those that came. It was wonderful. I felt we accomplished things in the spirit, so that was lovely. And Monday we got to just pray, and it was powerful, wasn't it, Gail? And Heidi, yes. Um, it was good. And so this week, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, so it's a holiday, so we won't be here. So just like that Friday, don't come on Monday because <laughs> you'll be standing out at the door. But if you do, for some reason, forget, just bless me, okay? Don't, don't think bad thoughts. Uh, anyway, today, do you, uh, this week, and you know I gave those pamphlets not show of hands, but did, did you guys like that? Were you able to have some of you enjoyed that? Sure, you can clap the hands. I like that. Don't have to lift your hands. You can clap them. Yeah, it's been good. I feel like uh, this month of blessing our pastors is just the beginning. And, you know, the word that keeps on resonating in me and just the Spirit of God is repurposed. And um, in each of our lives, we... Are called to do something. It says, while we are formed in our mother's womb, Psalms 139, all the days of our life were written in the book in heaven. And so we have all come to this earth for a purpose. And the word that we, I got was repurpose. So there are things that have been maybe laying dormant in your lives, maybe things that, uh, that you know, it says, um, the discouragement or uh, makes a heart sick, you know, when it, when it doesn't come. Well, I'm telling you the word of the Lord for you is the Holy Spirit is blowing upon your life once more. And those embers and things that have been laying dormant, he wants to bring them to life. Fire them up. Let's be fired up. Amen. Amen. So in the book of Ephesians... That's like there's the, there's the Gospels, and then as you go along, right? There's Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Well, we're taking a road trip with our pastors, pastors uh, Eve and Vanessa, on an Ephesians road trip. So there's six chapters in the book of Ephesians, and all six chapters, I've written a prayer. And so I want you this week... To, uh, to pray the book of Ephesians. Let's have a road trip with our pastors this week. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving. I remember going to a, 
in the young, my younger days, but I was uh, a bunch of little kids, little kids who were nonstop children. <laughs> yeah. <you. laughs> Eva was the calmest, I got to tell you that. <laughs> However, and I was just, I mean, I was exhausted. And this old friend of mine had said, come to our house on New Year's Eve. And I thought, oh, why would I do that, right? Because it was like, <laughs> you know, it was all my sinner friends, right? And, uh, but I, 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 said, I, I said to my husband, I'm going out. <laughs> and he went, oh, okay, so. Anyway, and, and, I, and I did not look my best. You know what I mean? There's times you look pretty good. And I look better in those days than these days, right? And, but but I, 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 I remember thinking, oh, why am I going with all these old friends looking like this, you know? But I went in, and I thought, well, maybe I'll get to talk to somebody about Jesus or something, you know? But they were partying. How many of you know you can't get much in when they're partying, right? <laughs> anyway, so I just stayed a little while, kind of. Let them know I was alive. <laughs> so all kinds of rumors about how I'd gotten crazy. And, you know, on those kind of things. <laughs> uh, but my friend phoned me the day or the day after. And she says, everybody commented on how wonderful you looked. I did not look wonderful. <laughs> I know I did not look wonderful. But there's something in us. See, there's something in us that was different. I, am, I was different than they knew me. I was different. There's a light in you that God can shine, that God can shine. Amen? And it just showed me something. I thought, it doesn't matter how I look at all, does it? Like, it's like, let God shine. Let God shine. He is well able to shine through us. I'm so thankful for that. So thankful for that. In a world where things are dark, yes. you get to be a light. Amen. God says you get to be a light. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit leads us, guides us. Aren't you glad for the Holy Spirit within you? Yes. Hallelujah. That you can hear? Yeah. You know, I was reading some other uh, things on 9-11. And anyone who was even a young, even a kid, in 2011, knows where they were at 9 11. Because it was so very, very horrible and dramatic, you know. And, uh, but what's always really got me about it, because you can look and say, how horrible. A thousand first responders died. I mean, that's horrendous. That's horrendous. And being a policeman's daughter, man, that just, it grips me always. It always grips me. It always grips me. A thousand thousand of those men and women and men and more died after from the toxic stuff you know but looking at that 2,000 other people perished so 3,000 perished there was supposed to be 30,000 people in those towers now think about that and it was like quarter to nine when the first plane hit it was like a couple of minutes after nine that the second plane hit I mean, you think of the office towers here, of people in their office. What time are they there? Well, I think they'll be anywhere between 8 and... But most people are there 8 or 9, right? They're, they're not coming in later. No. And some even young, eight, earlier. And yet there was the, it should have been the busiest time in those towers, people coming in. And 2,000 died. 1,000 mm. plus with the first responders. 8,000 got out of the building. 8,000 got out of that building. Thank the Lord. You think about how much time that plane hits, and they have to go down, many of them, over 1,000 steps down. And yet 8,000 got out of that building. It's, it's like a Thanksgiving story. It really is. And then you think, 20,000 people didn't get to work. Where were they? Where were those 20,000 people that should have been in those towers? Everyone would have a different story. And yet, you know, I think, that, I think the Holy Spirit was talking to everybody. We miss it. 
Doesn't mean all those 2,000 didn't hear God, they're bad people. No, we all miss it. We all miss it. But God spared. How many angels were working that morning? Huh? All those kids got out of that daycare. I mean, honestly. Honestly. In the middle of that evil, horrible, horrible time, God spared thousands of lives. 20,000 of them. And in our lives, you know, sometimes we see the tragedies. But we don't see the bigger picture of the things that God is doing in the midst. You know that expression, everything happens for a reason? I hate that expression. It's like everything, it's like everything happens for a reason for good. Like it's a good thing. I know. Things that happened in my life didn't have a reason. It was my stupidity. It, you know, like it's, it's dumb. It's, things happen because we make wrong decisions. Things happen because someone else close to you makes a wrong decision. You know, everything does, you know, in the scriptures is everything works together for good to those who are called after his purpose. So things that are good in the middle of his purpose, those things that work for his purpose are good. And he wants to bring things in that work for his purpose. He doesn't bring evil. Some tragedy happens. Well, you know, God knows what's going on. Yeah, people just got robbed from the earth in a tragedy. We need to think about the goodness of God this morning. I don't know how many times he spared my life. I can name a few. I don't know how many times he spared yours. I don't know how many times that you were driving and he had you turn left and someone would have creamed you if you turn right. You know, I got a dozen stories about my kids. You, we all have stories. How God spared. Hallelujah. Tell the story about when I wouldn't let you go with Nathan. <laughs> <You see? laughs> That's Nathan right there. First of all, she was a mean mother. <laughs> she acted like she was my mom and made me do stuff. Um, first, I think the, the important part of this story is, is that my mom was very, um, she was not permissive and she wasn't authoritarian. She was a presence, to, like she was just present always, you know, so controlled by presence. And so um, she didn't often say no to us when it was, you know, not, you know, normal things. And so I often would go with Nathan to his hockey games because he's so cute and so good. <laughs> He was such a good hockey player. And I'd lose my mind in the stands. I was the only one watching. Anyhow. And so, so then I, I came home. I, was, I think I was only 15. Anyway. And so I said, I said Mom, I want to go with Nathan and Kevin, which is his brother, to, um, to Kalmar and watch their hockey game. And I was just sitting there. And she goes, no, I don't think so. And I'm like, what? It was really weird. I was like, what do you mean I can't go? And she's like, no, I don't feel right. You're not, you can't go. And so I was a little annoyed, but a I... A little annoyed. <laughs> I was a very good child. Anyway, apparently I was a little more than annoyed. And then I was like, fine, you know, like I kind of just did it because I was told to, obviously. But as they go, um, Kevin, and, Kevin and Nathan are going down. And it was really icy that day, too. I think it was a blizzard. Was it a blizzard, too? And so Nathan probably knows the story better than me, but... I like the mic. So I was driving, or he was driving, Kevin was driving, Nathan was in the passenger seat, and they were going down Kalmar Highway, and a lady cut them off, right? Turned into them. So they go into the ditch, but through the ditch very fast, and going right towards a telephone pole line. No, a power pole line, right? Big wooden pole. And so Kevin's like, ah, you know, the one driving. And so he's reaching over, and, and they didn't wear seatbelts because they're farmers. Anyway, and so, <laughs> which helped in this situation. And so he's reaching over. So Nathan grabbed Kevin and pulled him over, to, like, to this side of him because it was coming. And then it hit, and then he woke up in the back seat. 
Nathan did. Wow. So he had buckled through those two and into the back seat, and he's looking up past and every, you know, wow. and uh, concussions and whiplash, very bad, the whiplash wow. and all that happened. But if I were in the car, Nathan would have catapulted back into where I was sitting. Kevin might have not been able to get out to his side. You know, like there's so many situations where it's, of course, God didn't want that accident to happen, no. but it did. Other people you can't control, but he's going to do everything he can to preserve your, your life, your time, everything, right? Because he can't control people. And so my obedience, like I could have snuck out the window and went with them. Oh, should have been in trouble. Oh, I would. And I would have never done that because I never did anything like that. <laughs> Ever. In oh, I'm in church, yeah. Sorry, Jesus. And so, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, in, in that moment of obedience, it says, honor your father and your mother. They will go well with you, yeah. and you will live. <laughs> and you think, oh, I'm living because I'm obeying. You're living, yeah, because you're obeying and you're not in the dumb place you shouldn't be because you're listening to your parent, you know. So that was one of the flip sides. So I was very thankful that my mom learned how to listen to the, to the cautions but because she wasn't in fear all the time. Yeah. If she was afraid all the time, she wouldn't have heard the caution right. because you're always afraid. You can't tell the difference. Right. But because she learned way young when I was little to not be afraid for her kids, but to have the caution. If she felt caution, she's like, no, you shouldn't be doing that. And so, and I'm just thankful at 15, I actually obeyed once. Yeah, that's good time. <laughs> <laughs> once, yeah. It was a good time. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> but the leading of the Holy Spirit, my goodness, you guys. Yeah. Look what he's given us. Can we be thankful today and just, no matter, you know, you may be having a tough week or a tough year, I don't know. But can we be thankful today? Can we open our hearts in thanksgiving for the times he's spared us, for the times he's led us, for the times he's corrected us and set us straight because we needed it. Amen? Praise God. So I really got off the offering, didn't I? So... <laughs> But the thing I noticed, you know, in Second uh, Corinthians, which I, I, I love and read a lot, but it talked about, uh, in Second Corinthians 9, in the Amplified, it says, obviously God loves a cheerful giver. Matt, he loves a cheerful giver. So I think the one, the most hilarious today, God will love the most. He loves a cheerful giver. And delights in the one whose heart is in his gift. Boy, this isn't throwing 20 bucks in the bucket, is it? Someone who delights in your ability to be able to give. Whether you're young or whether you're older. That's why our children so, so need to learn how to give. And God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come in abundance to you. So that you may always, under all circumstances, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything, being completely self-sufficient in him. Wow. That's, that's not dependent. Thank God for jobs. I mean, we're supposed to work. And thank God for paychecks. But the bottom line is, you saw through COVID and through other things, man, that, that paycheck can disappear overnight. Yeah. But our sufficiency is in him. And that doesn't change because of circumstances. And have an abundance for every good work and act of charity. Yes, Jesus. That is written and forever remains, uh, forever remains written. He, the benevolent and generous person, scattereth abroad. He gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Hallelujah. Now, he who provides, Jesus the Lord, who provides seed for the sower and bread for food, will provide and multiply every seed for sowing. It's not just one seed. It's where we plant where God wants us to plant. It increases, which shows itself in active goodness, kindness, and love. <laughs> this isn't being beat up to give, is it? You will be enriched in every way so that you may be generous and this generosity administered through us is producing thanksgiving to God from those who benefit. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So uh, in 13, because of this act of ministry, they will glorify God for your obedience to the gospel of Christ, which you confess, as well as your generous participation in this gift of giving. It's a gift of giving. It's actually a gift of giving. How, how, how amazing. You know, there's a, and it talks about here about the grace of giving. So we've always had a grace of giving, I believe, on this house. The amount of millions we've given is way more than the size of our house, isn't it? That's a grace of giving. That's not all raw, raw to us. It's actually a grace on us to give. It, and grace means God's enabling to give. And it's not because we have a bunch of millionaires yet. And yet, I'm not talking about those coming in. I'm talking about you at billionaires yet, right? God wants to prosper. You know, there's, uh, you know I was talking about women prospering the other, other week, and I've been reading ever since the prophetic words coming out that God is about to uh, bless women in the financial area. Amen. You know, witty ideas, jobs, work, I don't know, but hallelujah. I'm a woman. You're a woman. <laughs> Let's go. Amen. But he never neglects the other part. Right? He never doesn't neglect the man. But today, Father, I thank you for the grace of giving in this house. And we move towards that spirit. That we receive that which you've given. We receive the grace of giving. Not only to the house, but in our lives, God. To those around us. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you in your giving today. Thank you, Father. I want to keep going with what I was talking about last week uh, in Romans 4.21 and being fully persuaded. Is that f fully persuaded? You know, to be fully persuaded, you put everything into it, don't you? To be fully persuaded on something, that's, that's what you meditate on. That's what you think about. That's where your mind goes. You know, that's where your heart has peace in. So being fully persuaded that what God has promised, he was able also to perform. He was able to perform. I love that. He just doesn't promise it. He's able to perform it. It just doesn't give you a promise. This just doesn't speak to you in the word. You think, isn't that wonderful? It's a promise. But he's saying, I'm able to perform the promise. It's not just a promise. I am actually able to perform that promise. What he promised you, he's able to perform. You know, that scripture, 2 Corinthians 120, the NIV. For no matter how many promises God has made, <laughs> no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. Through Christ, what Christ has done, what God has performed through his son, it is yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. So we say amen, so be it. That's what amen means. So be it. Amen to God's yes. So where God says yes, we say amen. You know, we're believing for some really needy people healing right now miracle healings right now and so we agree with what with what God has promised so we say amen to God's yes we say amen to God's yes it's not about circumstances we say amen to God's yes what has he said about it what's his command about it what is his heart about it hallelujah we say amen so be it Jesus so be it, Jesus, to your yes. Where you have said yes, holy. Amazing thing, uh, you know, the prayer uh, Jesus chose disciples to pray. Uh, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Amen. That his kingdom comes. As it is in heaven, let it be where? On earth. Like we are conduits, conduits of, of, of God wanting heaven to come into the earth. 
You know, lots of people want to go to heaven and have a trip. Well, I, I'm all for that. But I tell you what scripture says is that we are supposed to believe God to bring heaven to earth. There is no sickness in heaven. There's no poverty in heaven. There's no fighting in heaven. There's no racists in heaven. Hallelujah. There's no depression in heaven. There's no oppression in heaven. We bring through Jesus Christ in us that which is in heaven to earth. To earth. No way to get there, but uh, do you feel God? Feel sorry for God sometimes? I, I mean, really, he made it that he works through us. That's why it's so important to hear and do. Be quick to obey. He's using you. Hallelujah. He's using you. And Ryan, Ryan Harm Bonke, and he, he brought the word of the Lord. I mean, millions were saved in Africa, evangelists. I mean, just tremendous story. And, and he, he got gospel uh, pamphlets and stuff, I think, to every home in Europe. Like, huge, a huge deal. Huge, huge deal. And he did it in North America, too, but a huge deal. And uh, he says to the Lord, why do I have to do this? And he says, because the first five said no. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be in that first five. Oh, I'm sure there's things that he told me to do that I didn't do. Thank God he's not bringing anything to mind. Because I usually didn't have to talk about it right now. But there's things, really, that if we meditate on it, we know there's things that God would have had us, have us do that we bypassed. Oh, I'm remembering something. I remember I was heading to my mom's place, driving to my mom's place, and I knew there was a backslidden Jesus people in the church, in that, sorry, in, in hospital. He'd got into witchcraft, all kinds of weird stuff. And uh, so I, I was driving by the hospital to go to my mom's. Really felt to go see this guy. I thought, well, I'll go when I come back. All right. Well, I got caught up. My mom's place, by the time I came back, they weren't letting visitors in. Well, I didn't get out. I knew they wouldn't let visitors in. I wasn't a pastor at the time. And uh, so I felt pretty bad about it. Just kind of prayed, you know. And you know, we pray in tongues through stuff that we should have done. You know, but thank God we, we can. And uh, so the next day, my brother-in-law went up to see him. And the first thing the guy said to him was, I prayed yesterday that if God loved me, he'd send up a Christian. Amen. I tell you, I never forgot. I never forgot that. That sometimes are getting sidetracked Instead of just getting the job done. Instead of just doing it. Just doing it. Sometimes we overthink everything. Or we're inconvenienced. I've got a revelation for you. God does not care if you're inconvenienced. Have you noticed that? He, he could care less if you're inconvenienced. Because a soul is waiting for something. Hallelujah. He is able to perform. Perform what? What he's promised you. He's able to perform. Isaiah 55, 11, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where I send it. God's word will prosper where it is sent. That's why we, that's why we proclaim his word. Is that right? We proclaim his word because it prospers. Our words are just words. We, you know, we can be nice to people. We can encourage people. That's all nice. But boy, when you get hooked into God's word, 
what God's word says about something, what God's statement is on it. Hallelujah. It's a totally different ballgame. You've gone up about 100 points there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. God is a God of promise. So you can't judge your life by what you're facing today, really. But by the promise of God. He talks to you about prosperity, and you're broke. He talks to you about health, and you seem to feel sicker. Relationship, and there's a greater strain. Kids, and they seem worse. All of those things are not what you focus on. It's not you close your eyes to facts. You can see what's going on. But there's a greater fact, and that God's promises work in those situations. God's promises do. And if we hook up to his words, to his promises, it's so easy to get into our own minds. He is the God of promise and a God that will perform. Thank you, Father. Luke 1, You know, Mary's cousin came to see her. She was, she was pregnant with John the Baptist. Mary was pregnant with Jesus. And it says, For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. <laughs> John the Baptist leaped in his mom's womb for joy. Joy. Hallelujah. And when, and when you meet the Savior... It's about joy, isn't it? And blessed is she that believed, speaking of Mary, for there shall be a performance of those things that were told her from the Lord. And Mary, such a confirmation to her, my soul does magnify the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Hallelujah. She that believed there shall be a performance. You know, talk about Abraham having Isaac. But it said that Sarah also had to believe. They both had to believe. This wasn't one. So together, there's a belief system. You know, if you, that's why if you're a husband and wife or you have a, a prayer team, I mean, there's something that happens when two or three are gathered together that God is able to perform the promises spoken. Hallelujah. So I'm so encouraged by those who are praying in the morning. It's just God is able to perform. Thank you, Father. Psalm 105. I bought a, I bought a clock, you know, but it doesn't work. So, I don't know what that means. Is there anything prophetic? Probably not. Okay. Psalm 105, 17. He sent a man before them, even Joseph. And Joseph in the Old Testament, he's the one with the man with many colored, you know, and his brothers sold him. He ended up in all kinds of situations, he ended up in jail in, in Egypt. And he had favor wherever he was. He got favor. You think, well, everything's good. I got favor. And then bang, something happens. What happened? God's able to perform what you believe for. You know, he had the, the dream of everybody bowing down to him, even his own parents. And I mean, everybody got kicked off at that one. Like, who do you think you are? I think there's some things you should keep to yourself. But that's where you get what man thought for evil. God turned to good. That was Joseph. Right? So there he was, and he became the second under Pharaoh. Really. The second under Pharaoh. But said, he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. He didn't start out worshiping God, I bet. He had to get to it because he was in pain. They're thinking, where's the promises, God? Here I was working for this guy, working really hard. He prospered, and then his wife came on to me, and, and I ran away from her, and then she said I raped her, and now here I am. Have you ever been there? 
Well, hopefully you're not that bad. You ever been there and thought, oh, man, this is awesome. And then, <laughs> So he said, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. So here he is in a horrible situation. He said, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. I mean, I mean, he got it all. He got it all. He had total control over Egypt. And Egypt was a pagan place. Hallelujah. Tried, refined. You know, that tried means to refine. The word of God refined him. The word that he had spoken to him refined him. It's like a goldsmith, you know. Uh, it's like when you weld material to material, iron to iron, steel to steel. It becomes stronger in the, men, in the welding. It becomes stronger than one. So that, that, that trying... Uh, it tries you to find out what's in you. It tries you to find out if you're believing. It tries you so that you're able to believe because that the word of God is just not a verse. When God comes and tries you with that verse, you become one with that verse. When you believe God is your healer, you become one with that scripture. When you believe you're free of oppression, you become one with that scripture. It, the word comes to try you. And sometimes hell's doing all kinds of stuff. You know, this is worse. Look what's happening here. Now the word of God comes and tries you. Are you listening to my word? Not all this stuff. To be in the spirit, you have to believe for spiritual things. You have to believe in the unseen. Even more than the seen. Tried means a fusing together. You weld those two pieces of steel together. Hallelujah. So the word of God comes to try you. To strengthen you. To get you in the right position. To get your heart stable. Hallelujah. So you know, you can't have a bad attitude and have the word come to pass. So the word of God will try you. So you. Listen, that's killing you there. You're never going to get past that there. And the word of God comes to try you. You're to forgive. The word of God comes to try you. And anything he's spoken, all the promises, do you think he's just going to give you promises and then you live any way you want? Aren't you glad that you aren't like he found you? <laughs> Lots of times we forget how he found us, what condition we were in. Hallelujah. But the word started coming into our lives and started to, started to try us. It started to work on us that we became one with that word. How important is the word? It's everything. It's everything. Thank you, Father. So you can't be bitter. It just gets in the way. So what the enemy meant for evil, God turned to good in Joseph's life, and he does in our life. If he had been bitter and unforgiving, really, Israel would, would have been wiped out. So would Egypt. So did all the other countries around that came for food that Joseph knew about through dreams from God, stored up for seven years when they had plenty, and they had seven years of famine, and they had enough food. But God tried him, and at the end of it was found faithful. Hallelujah. He's quite, it's quite a story, Joseph. 
He's one of my favorite in the Bible. Him and Daniel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. My brethren, count it all joy. James 1, 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. It doesn't mean God tempts you. The Bible says God does not tempt you. He's not doing stuff. It says the wickedness of our heart causes these things, can cause these things. But it's interesting in this scripture, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Uh, that can also mean adversity. Count it all joy when you fall into divers adversity. Well, I don't think so. I mean, count it all joy. Why would I count it all joy? You know, it's like the guy dri driving to see his, his daughter in the mental home wrote that uh, book on praise. And she, you know, she wasn't even there kind of thing. And he's sitting at that red light and, and just hopeless. It's hopeless, his, wife, his daughter's totally mentally ill, not talking, nothing. And God spoke to him and says, what am I going to do? And God said, praise me. Begin to thank me. And he began to praise God. He began to thank God. And when he pulled into that mental home, he's going down that hallway where his daughter is kept, and he heard his daughter's voice. I want to see my dad. I want to see my dad. God had delivered through the power of praise, through the power of thanksgiving. Such a powerful thing. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Thank you, Father. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work is patience. You know, Lots of times we have trouble because of the way we live our lives. I mean, that can enter into things, can't it? But when we're standing on faith, we do have to stand. We do have to proclaim. We do have to speak. It's not just, yeah, I have faith. No, I tell you, there's times you stand until faith is vibrating. Thank you, Father. Work with patience. Oh, that word. It means work with cheerful or hopeful endurance. Whoever said this is a, <laughs> a bowl of cherries or rose garden? No, we live on the earth. As long as we are living on the earth, we need the Lord to touch us. We need the Lord to encourage us. We need the Lord to lead us. Because we are supposed to be successful in the spirit on the earth. Literal translation, work and patient, means to remain under with a right attitude. We should put that up in walls somewhere. To remain under with a right attitude. Wow. You need God for that one. Remain under with a right attitude that endurance is producing in you. The completion of your faith. It's endurance. Patience. He does not want to make you just a promise. He wants to change what needs to be changed in you to accomplish what he needs to do through you and what he wants to do in you. He gives promises to help shape your life, right? To know him and his faithfulness, to hold on to the unseen, not live by the, by the seen. I tell you, many of us could not have gone through what we've gone through if we didn't hold on to the promises of God. Isn't that true? And the more, and if you're young and just, you know, new Christian, you'll learn that's the truth. If you grab hold to the promise that God gives you, you grab hold to his word, you grab hold to his presence, spend time with him, you find out how true it is that God is able to hold you. 
that God is able to walk with you. And not only that, he wants bigger things for you than just making things, just making it. He wants bigger things. And I got to say, it does not matter your age. It doesn't matter if you're young or you're old. God didn't say when you hit senior, put your feet up. I noticed today that most seniors don't have their feet up. We're just a busy people. We're a busy, we're a busy people. And there's more seniors right now on the earth than any other group. Than any other group. I think God has a plan. I think God has a purpose. For the young, for the old, for this day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philippians 1 6 being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ what he's put in you he'll perform it until the day he returns hallelujah he will perform it Romans 4 21 and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. Amen? Thank you, Father. And so now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 2.14. Thank you, Father. I make manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place, which, which always means all times, all times. Thank you, Father. Father, we just thank you today. On this Thanksgiving Day in Canada, we thank you today for the promises that hold us, for promises that speak to us. Father, I thank you for, for those maybe who don't have a word in their heart from you, that God, that you would speak, you would lead them to that word that you have for them, that word that holds them, that word that holds them. That no matter what's going on around them, that word holds them in the name of Jesus by the blood of Christ. By the blood of Christ. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you that where the word has come to try us. Father, I pray that we would break through in patience. We'll break through where we need endurance. And we will break through to where faith is vibrating in us. That faith is responding to the powers of grace. And that by faith, we pull into the natural. What is ours to pull into the natural from the spiritual. In the name of Jesus, we pull from the natural. That what we need today. We pull from the spirit to the natural. What we need today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God, you've given us such power. You've given us such authority. You've given us everything we need. God, I thank you for opening our hearts up to the direction you have today for us. The answers we need today, God. The promises that we need to grab hold of today, God. In Jesus' name. May we rejoice as Mary rejoiced that the word of God was dwelling in her. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shine upon you and be gracious. 
to those weary knees. Oh, be strengthened. Be strengthened. Be strengthened. Be strengthened this morning. Receive strength. Supernatural strength. We receive your strength. We receive your strength. We receive your strength. Yes, this very moment. We receive your strength. We receive your strength. We receive your strength today. I receive your strength. I receive your strength. I receive your strength for this day. I receive your Thank you. 